There are two ways in which a mother can pass on HIV to her baby during pregnancy. These ways include Number 1. Sharing blood supply. During pregnancy, the mother's blood also circulates within the unborn baby. This sharing of blood could expose the fetus to the disease, causing the baby to be born with HIV. Number 2. Exposure to the infection during childbirth. During a natural delivery, a baby is exposed to a large amount of the mother's bodily fluids. If the baby is exposed to infected fluids for a long period of time the disease can be transmitted from the mother to the child. PMTCT stands for Prevention of Mother to Child Transmission. And the B plus option is an approach that aims to start a lifelong antiretroviral ARV treatment immediately after the woman is screened HIV positive. Without treatment, there is a 20 to 45% chance that a baby born to an HIV infected mother will become infected. The CD4 count is a measurement of the strength of a patient's immune system. The lower the CD4 count, the weaker the immune system. Under previous approaches, a pregnant woman would only be put on ARV treatment once her CD4 count had reached a threshold, or only for the sole duration of the pregnancy and breastfeeding period. HIV and AIDS are not one and the same. Those with AIDS are infected with HIV, but people infected with HIV do not necessarily have AIDS. A person has AIDS when their T-cell count falls below a measurement scale of 200, as opposed to the 500 to 1500 in a healthy person. An extremely low CD4 count means that a person's immune system is no longer healthy enough to fight off intruding viruses and bacteria.
I gave birth to my son in 2007. Unfortunately, the virus got into him. He's just a happy soul. Whenever I look at him, something in me dies. I think I am the one who got the virus to him. Whenever I look at him, become weak and weak. I feel that I am the reason for him to be like that. When I was told I was HIV positive, I was in denial. I refused to take medication. I was smoking. I was drinking. I was just living the reckless life. I want to talk to all women out there. Please take your medication. You're not doing it for yourselves. You're doing it for your angels. When I found out 
I am pregnant and HIV. I was shocked. Because I sleep with my husband only. And it turned out he was busy with other girls. I joined the counseling at the clinic and it has been very helpful. It has made me stronger than ever. I receive my treatment every month. I eat healthy food and I do exercise. I want to try the all I want to try my best to make sure my baby does not get infected. But either way, I will love them. Hi, I'm Gina Kegana. I'm from Kempton Park and I am 22 years old. Okay. Living in a country that has the fourth highest HIV and AIDS rates, how have you prevented yourself from being part of that rate? Well, I think abstinence is key. So I abstain from any sexual activity. And if I had to actually, you know, be in any sort of relationship and be sexually active, I'd probably just use protection. And I think it's key to, you know, preventing such things such as HIV and any other STDs or STIs. How has your partner supported you in making sure that the both of you stay negative? Well, with us, besides, you know, not being sexually active, um, we go for a regular HIV test. So every six months, we will have a HIV test just to check our status and be sure that none of us, you know, are lying to each other or anything. Okay. How did you enhance your knowledge regarding HIV and AIDS? Well, I'd say it started back in primary because we all get taught from primary, you know, what HIV and AIDS is and how it grows and how it spreads. So through our primary and through high school, I got, you know, the basic knowledge about it. But then I think as we grow up, that's when you start realizing that actually this is something that's very much serious. And that's when you start wanting to know more so that you don't end up being sick and then regretting it later. So I continued, um, you know, getting to know exactly, you know, how to know when somebody's HIV positive or how how not to actually get HIV positive. Okay. When was the very first time you had your HIV test? I'd say my very first time was yeah, back in primary with the regular checks through high school and as I said before, and I'm still having every six months I go and I check my status, regardless of the fact that there's no sexual activity. But I still need to check because, you know, I can get HIV from any sort of way, you know, from the way we've been taught back in high school and primary. So yeah, a regular six months check I think is perfect and ideal. Okay. What's your advice to the youth considering the fact that today's youth is highly sexually active? Um, what would you say to them right now? I think I'd say, um, I'd probably tell them how dangerous it is. You know, you can't use a person who's HIV, um, HIV positive as an example because some just seem to not, you know, see what they've gone through. So what I'd say to them is that, you know, make sure, regardless of the fact that you are sexually active, make sure you check your status. You know, even if it's not like me every six months, maybe every seventh month or every year, which I think is a bit too much, but every six months I think for me is ideal because you get to know that your partner you're being with isn't, you know, being sexually active with somebody else because I can't, you can't just get it from me, but you can get it from an external partner. So I think uh, making sure, because we can't stop anybody from being sexually active, that's, very much so abstain you can abstain if you want um use protection and ensure that you check your status every six months i think it's it's a good way to be sure that you know you're with the right person who isn't doing anything that you wouldn't be doing <laughs> okay and then to those who are already infected with the virus yeah. what do you have to say to them i think stay strong sometimes it isn't your fault that it happened sometimes it is a lesson to others, you know, it's a lesson th through you, you know, because you made a mistake, you know, you weren't listening and you can, you know, advise others that, you know, listening doesn't help. You need to, no, actually not listening doesn't help. Listening is what helps, you know, because you were once young. I think with the HIV rate, it's mainly young people, I think, who have HIV. It's because we ignore the idea that you could have HIV and you tend to check chances. I think this is something that it's life risking and we shouldn't take chances with it. I think we should... With them, they should encourage more people. As much as it is something that you can be ashamed of in public and you can be scared to tell somebody that, you know, I'm HIV positive and it happened this way and this way. But I think it's a way to become, in a sense, a hero because you get to 
stop something from happening. Mm. You know, you get to stop somebody from getting sick to that extent. You know, you get to stop them from, you know, catching those STDs or STIs also. You know, you get to save somebody's life. So I think they should, you know, look more into actually speaking more about it and making more, you know, the youth more aware. And yes, very much educating those that don't actually, especially the youth, listen in classes. You know, sometimes you need somebody else besides outside the class to actually show you, you know, something that you weren't interested in knowing when you were in class. Okay, thank you very much it's for your pleasure. time. My name is uh, Sister Francina. I'm doing D42 in Baragwana Nursing College. Um, yeah. Uh, sister, would like to ask you a few questions about um, pregnant women and how HIV infects the what's the word? Okay, how HIV infects the, the newborn. Now, would you tell us more about um, the the procedure that happens inside a pregnant woman that causes infection through the newborn? Okay, um, as far as I know, when a mother is pregnant, and remember, when a mother is pregnant, suppose we, we encourage them to book early at the clinics so that we may prevent uh, the disease like HIV uh, infection and other diseases. As now we're based on HIV A and AIDS. So when the mother comes to the clinic, we test for every mother that comes to the clinic. We test, we test them for HIV and AIDS, okay? So, if we find that the mother is HIV positive, then that's when, after treating, after testing, and if it's positive, then we start with the medication immediately. We give, we give them a, a combination, which are the, the drugs that have to prevent that virus to go to the neonate. As we know, for the mother and the neonate they are not sharing the same blood. They are sharing. They are not sharing the same blood, and they can be trans. They can be affected through placenta. So we know that the placenta is a is a go away. It takes when a mother eats whatever the mother is eating, is transmitted to the neonate through the placenta. So if the mother is infected, and um, the, 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 it's not taking any drugs, any medication like FGC, which is a fixed dose uh, combination. Then it's possible to get infected the neonate through placenta if it's not treated. But if it's treated, yes, then it stops the, the, the virus to go to, 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 to infect the neonate. Oh, now, if the mother is HIV positive, is it possible for an unborn baby to stay negative, not be in, uh, infected? Uh, the baby is possible to be uh, negative. That's why I'm saying, if the mother realizes that she's pregnant, she must go to the clinic immediately. She must book early so that we can know the mother's status. Immediately we know, then we give those drugs. Those drugs, they prevent the virus to go to the uh, unborn baby. So that's why we encourage them that early booking is it's, it's good to them. And then yes, the baby can born not being affected because the mother will be taking that medication. Then after, after the baby is born, that's when we give nerviripine because and they, uh, now we do we, uh, with a pregnant woman, we, if they are infected, then we, pre we do this that we call a, as a prevention to mother to child transmission. So we do that so that we, we don't want this uh, neonate to born with this virus. And how can it be prevented? in terms of medication and all that is needed? Uh, firstly, we can prevent it like when the mother uh, does an early booking and then again is prevented by uh, medication to fight against that virus. Because when after, if the mother tested positive, 
That's when we take blood to, to check for a viral load. So the higher the viral load, the higher the risk. But with the drugs, as we give the drugs, then that's where we reduce the risks of the uh, infection to the neonate. It reduces early booking, it helps, and the drugs, it does help. Then the nevirapine we give to the um, we give to the neonate after birth, immediately after birth, for six months, and then we do what is called um, uh, uh, testing for PCR. So we want to see if this baby is tested negative or positive. But if the mother was taking FDC before immediately she tested positive, then the chances of infecting the baby they are very very thin. That's why we encourage Edibu. Uh, in conclusion, as we wrap up, Sister Francina, how would you encourage pregnant women with HIV? Um, with a pregnant women who are exposed, we encourage them to, to book early, firstly, to stick to their drugs. They must adhere to their medication. And we encourage them to eat uh, healthy, to live a healthy life, uh, like um, to eat, to eat um, a balanced nutrients food. We encourage them to exercise, not strenuous exercises, but like uh, you know this slightly exercise for pregnant women. And also we we encourage them to to uh, to condomize. And then to come to the to visit to come to the visits to, to do follow up visit regularly. We write them the date to come, and then when they come, then they 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 we check them, we monitor their bloods, then we give them go ahead, and then we encourage them to live a healthy life. And there is this thing that is a plan that is being established by a World Health Organization. Uh, it's a uh, um, 1990-1990 with this 1990-1990 we we encourage uh, the pregnant woman to go to clinic as early as they can so that they can be uh, tested uh, with this uh, HIV and uh, AIDS uh, virus and then we encourage them to give birth to unborn to give birth to unaffected uh, neonates, newborns. With 1990-90, the plan is about to, to give birth to an affected baby. That's all. So we want the babies who are born with, without HIV virus. That's, that's the plan that is being established by World Health Organization. So that's why we at the clinics, we encourage them to book early, to take their medication, and then we monitor them uh, as they come to the clinic for follow-up visits until they give birth to unaffected babies. That's our plan. Okay, sister. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for yours.